but tell me about your field days. Tell me about how they got started, or tell me about how many people you reach. Uh, you plan them in the spring and in the fall, right? Uh, we started in um, 1984, and this goes back to uh, Rodale and the Institute and uh, John Habern. It was, um, we had started to do a little testing, uh, very, um, very poor testing, trying to compare one side of a field to another. And we did that for a few years, and we really weren't learning anything, and we needed some help. And we were spending money for testing costs and mm -hmm. soil tests and all these plots, and it was more than we handled, could handle. So we went to Rodale, and, uh, and John Habern said that we'll, we'll help you, and we'll have a field day. And that's how field day started. And that started in 84, and uh, uh, I think we had over 500 people. At the first one? At the first one. In how, two days. We how had. did you advertise it to get that kind of response? Uh, Blue Farm Magazine was all. New Farm Magazine. And, uh, well, there, there was no other place for people to go. No, no. And we're wondering how, you know, now with all the other places to go and people telling the story that uh, um, we'll probably work ourselves out of a job. And that'll be fine. Mm, That's yeah. real success <laughs> if you can work yourself out of a job. Yes. And so down through the years, um, um, well, our field day attendances range from all oh, about 330 up to 600. Mm -hmm. And then we have tours other times during the year that people call up for special tours and special field days. Do the same people, or do you get a lot of repeaters or do you get a lot of new people? Both. 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 There's some I know people, they come from uh, great distances yes, to come. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know if we've hit every state in the United States yet that's been here, but it, it would be getting uh, pretty close because they've come from Canada to Texas and from both coasts. Mm -hmm. And so since that time, um, between our presentations that we do in the wintertime and we've learned how to be good extension people, we keep counts now of the people. <laughs> And, uh, and that's over, between the tours and presentations, over 22,000 people. So. Since 1984? Yeah. So um, how much longer? Um, that, that's, I'm not going to worry about that. No, no. Um, I, it's, um, the interest you. has been increasing uh, all the time. And uh, through the help of the Rodale Institute to, to help get us some more help so that we can spend the time to travel and, and the time to take care of the plots. Mm -hmm. So my part in this is, uh, is the field trials. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say field trials, do you show examples of um, uh, ridge tillage? Give me a description of what you would do in a typical field day. Um, okay, uh, we have eight slide show presentations that we give. Mm -hmm. uh, we will run four of those on the first day and uh, first thing in the morning, we have a slideshow, and then we go out and do half the field tour. Mm -hmm. We come back in at 11 and have another slideshow, and then we have uh, we we cater a dinner here. I was going to say, what about feeding and uh, all the rest of it? No, it's uh, you can you can get it all here. If you want. <laughs> and then even some people say the second day mm -hmm. they'll see a, d a different set of slideshows, mm -hmm. and we will go out on the same field days or the field tours, so in the afternoon we finish, we do the last half of the field tours. And we look at plots with ridge till with and without herbicides, mm -hmm. um, different kind of fertility trials. Uh, we'll have some trials next year on strips of corn, beans, and oats, mm -hmm. uh, where we will have right alongside them a conventional system of corn and beans and conventional tillage. And that's, that's going to be a long-term uh, experiment to uh, see, you know, Will this work as far as economics? What does it do as far as erosion, mm -hmm. the bugs and the insects, and uh, kind of the whole nine yards? Is that how wide the strips are? No. I'm no, the silly. strips are four, <laughs> four rows wide. Four rows wide. Yes. And that's pretty much standard? As, as uh, no, this is not standard. Mm. Uh, this is new, mm -hmm. of trying to put uh, more crops because the strip idea, let me say this first, the strip idea uh, is not new of corn and beans. Mm -hmm. But to put oats or a cereal grain in strips on ridges, 
mixed in with this to give us more diversity to help us with the insects and the diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, with these outside rows of corn, we increase our yields. We're finding with the outside uh, parts of the oat strips, we increase yields there. And uh, then how do you um, incorporate this with cover crops? Um, how do you fertilize this? Because this is a cash grain situation. Mm -hmm. um, because this was what was needed in, this, in this com our community here. That's where most people are at. We have had a livestock program with a five-year rotation, which, which works. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that in strips. But most of the people around here do not want to go back to raising livestock. So, really? So what can we do in a cash grain, the corn bean situation, to help the erosion, help the economics, um, the environment as far as the pesticide, uh, mm -hmm. herbicide question? And uh, that's probably the most exciting thing uh, right now that we're going, going to move into next year. And these research uh, plots are ones that were set up with the help of Rodale? Or, or do you have any help from ISU? You're close to Iowa State University. Right. Uh, everybody's kind of let me do my own thing. Um, we've had some help to make sure that, uh, sure, I want all the help I can find. Mm -hmm. And we ask people at field days, you know, if you've got any suggestions, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears. And I do pick up a lot of ideas of people on the hay racks. Mm -hmm. Why don't you do that? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Sure, um, but uh, basically, uh, people have um, have let us do our do our thing, and uh, if it don't work, there's some things we tried that didn't work. Well, and then you try something else. Right, right. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the the buffalo planter you mentioned. Do you have other machinery that is special machinery that you use? Well, the, uh, the buffalo cultivator, that, that kind of comes in a package mm -hmm. to, so that those two things work together so we can work with high residue. And then um, we have uh, used a rotary hoe mm -hmm. before we cultivate. And, um, and some companies, the M&W company, was probably the first to build a hoe that would work better with higher residues. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's becoming more an acceptable practice. Then uh, when we get to cover crops, uh, we need to find a, we're in the process, we have a new drill coming now that we can just put two rows of cover crops on top of the ridge and drill oats in ridges on top valleys. Mm -hmm. So that uh, takes some adjustments and some modifications. A little fine tuning on your part yes. to make it do what you want it to do. I know that the machinery angle is something that I have read has is, is been difficult.